Let's talk a little bit now about color. Three colors in particular. Anybody know what three colors I'm talking about? RGB, red, green, and blue. When we're working in Photoshop, we're gonna be working in RGB. We're gonna work pretty much exclusively using additive color theory. We call it additive because if you look at any of the computers that are turned off right now, they're black. And if we were to turn them on, uh, different amounts of red, green, and blue lights would show to build up an image. And from that, you can create anything. Uh, the projector right now, if we turned it off, okay, you'd see black up here. It's putting out different amounts of red, green, or blue lights. Your cameras only have red, green, and blue sensors in them. Your eyeballs, anybody take your eyeballs out and taking a good look at it? If you're looking at your retina, you'd see in the back, don't do it anymore. Uh, you would see <laughs> three different types of cone cells that detect red, green, and blue. We are all trichromic devices. We call it additive, because like I said, we start with nothing, you start with black, and we add in different amounts of red, green, and blue light. So let's say you're in a room and all the lights were off and there was a, a screen at the front, and you had with you three flashlights and you shone them on the screen. One had a red filter, one had a green filter, and one had a blue filter. If you were to shine all three of those into the same spot, what do you think you'd see? So you took your red flashlight, you moved it in towards the center there. And then you took your blue flashlight and put it in towards the center there. Where they overlapped, you'd end up with white. And that's basically how all this stuff works. If you're looking at white on your computer monitor there, if you were to look with a magnifying glass, you would actually see a red light, a green light, and a blue light right side by side, tricking you into thinking that you're seeing white. All right, so that's additive color theory. What do you think the counterpart to additive color theory is, the opposite of it? Subtractive. Let's say you're doing something for a magazine, and you send it off. For the presses, they aren't gonna have red, green, and blue as their primaries. Anybody know what the primaries are for subtractive color theory? Cyan, magenta, and yellow. We call it subtractive because it's used in the printing industry, um, and you start with whatever you're printing on, usually some kind of paper, uh, which is white, which means that it reflects, in theory, all of the colors of light that fall on it. And then we subtract some of that reflected light by adding different amounts of cyan, magenta, or yellow dyes to that paper. And in theory, when we combine equal amounts of cyan, magenta, and yellow, we end up with black. I say in theory. When you're a kid, and you go, I'm going to paint a rainbow. So you take all your bright colored paints and you mix them all together and then you stir them up. Did you get a rainbow? What'd you get? There you go. Well, you got that kind of crap brown color, didn't you? Um, <laughs> same kind of deal in the printing industry. If they combine equal amounts of cyan, magenta, and yellow inks, they get usually kind of a grayish, I mean, brown. It's not quite right. So what do they use instead? Anybody know? Have you heard CMY? K. So they put a little black channel in there just to fill in those shadows. So you end up with something more like cyan, magenta, you get this kind of ugh, gray color. So you put that black in that just fills in the shadows there. So when we talk about CMY, cyan, magenta, and yellow, those are the primaries. In the real world, you actually have to mix something in with it to get those shadows. Now, something interesting. The primaries for subtractive are cyan, magenta, and yellow. But when we mix equal amounts of yellow dyes and magenta dyes, put them on the same sheet of paper, what do we get? We get red. And, and when we combine cyan dyes and yellow dyes, what do we get? And when we combine cyan and magenta, we get blue. So by using these three primaries, the secondaries are the additive primaries. So the, the secondaries of the subtractive primaries are the additive primaries. And if we were to look on the additive, I wonder if we'd notice something similar. So where that green flashlight and the blue flashlight overlap, we've got cyan. And where the blue and the red overlap, we've got magenta. And where the red and the green overlap, we've got yellow. Just to see what the implications of this are, let's say you're doing a job for a school. They've hired you to photograph all of the students. So you got your camera system set up, uh, you got all your lights going, and you got your camera set to auto white balance. Is that a good idea, auto white balance? Oh. But let's say you did. Um, and then, uh, you know, all the students are coming through. And then Becky comes in and she's wearing this bright pink, purplish sweater. And the camera sees all that magenta. And what does it do to try to, it goes, oh, look at all that magenta. I better fix that. What does it do? It sees it over here in magenta. It goes, I better get rid of some of that magenta. And it pushes it this way towards green. It adds some green to get rid of that magenta. And when you get the pictures back, you know, you're opening them in your studio and, oh, the sweater doesn't look quite the way it used to. And she looks like she's going to throw up. And then Larry comes in and he's wearing this bright green pullover and the camera sees all that green. What does it do? It says, oh, look at all this green. What does it do to fight all that green that it thought it saw? 
It, goes to, it adds some magenta to it. So now you're sitting in front of your computer going, well, I better fix these. So the image of Becky, she's got that green face, and oh, okay, well, I got red, green, and blue channels, so I'll go to my green channel, and I'll just subtract some green, take out some of the green, and she doesn't look as sick, and the, the sweater looks much better. All right, and then you open up the picture of Larry, who's got that kind of, looks like a, a lobster, because he's got all this purple in his face, and you're like, oh, look at all that magenta in there. I got my red channel, my green channel, but I don't, blue, oh man, I don't have a magenta channel. You go to the opposite. So in RGB, that would be green. And you notice that they're directly across from each other. So let's say you photographed something at a, a wedding and you were indoors under tungsten lights, but you still had your camera set to daylight. What color is tungsten relative to daylight? It's heavily yellow. It's got a really yellow cast to it. And you'd be like, oh man, red, green, blue, I don't have a yellow channel. What channel would you go to to fix a yellow cast in an image? Yeah, you go to blue, directly across, there's your blue. If it has cyan cast, you go to red. And people who are working in the printing houses have the opposite problem. They have a cyan, magenta, yellow, and a black channel. So if something had a real strong green cast to it, they'd have to go to their magenta channel. Eventually, it'll become second nature to remember what the opposites of each are. You know, what's the opposite of red, what's the opposite of green. But for now, here's some things that might help. You guys seen the color wheel before? Now this is the RGB color wheel. There's other color wheels. The artist primaries are blue, red, and yellow. But look at this. Here's red. And look what's directly across from it, cyan. Red and cyan are opposites. And there's yellow, directly across is blue. Blue and yellow are opposites. And green and magenta. And in the center, we've got neutral, no color. So that's one way to remember what the opposites are. So if something had a bit of a, a yellowish cast, you would have to go towards blue to get rid of it. Another way to remember, uh, we always say RGB and CMYK. And you'll notice from RGB, CMY, red is right over cyan, green is right over magenta, and blue is right over yellow. So just if you're like, okay, what's the opposite of, of blue? RGB, CMY, blue and yellow. So that's another way to remember it. And I've put a third one on there that I heard a while ago. Now this isn't meant to be an ad or prompt you to buy anything, but if you remember, buy GM cars, blue and yellow, green and magenta, and cyan and red whatever works. Uh, but like I said, over time, as you're working with stuff, it'll just become second nature. Oh, I got a bit of a green cast in there. If you're in CMYK, you go to your magenta, fix it out. Um, you'll, you'll just know these things.